Welcome to this Chemscape presentation on silica exposure and prevention. In this presentation, we will learn about the dangers of silica dust exposure and how to prevent it. Silica dust is one of the most common hazards on a work site. Millions of workers across North America are exposed to silica dust, also known as crystalline silica. Breathing in crystalline silica dust over a prolonged period can cause silicosis a serious and irreversible lung disease in which fine particles deposited in the lungs scar the lung tissue. Crystalline silica is a natural component of stone, soil, and sand. It is also found in other materials, such as concrete, mortar, granite, and artificial stone. The most common form of crystalline silica is quartz. Silica dust is made up of small particles that become airborne during various work activities, including cutting, drilling, chipping, sanding, or grinding materials that contain crystalline silica. These materials can include sand, concrete, brick, block, stone, and mortar. When bound in a matrix, like rock or concrete, silica is harmless. But when disturbed, airborne, and inhaled, it becomes a serious health hazard. Silicosis, an irreversible but preventable lung disease, is caused by inhalation of respirable silica dust. Work exposures to silica dust also cause other serious diseases, including lung cancer. Silica is one of the most common hazards in industry, particularly in residential and road construction, gravel crushing, street sweeping, mining, oil and gas operations, agriculture, Abrasive blasting is a major source of crystalline silica, and the blasting actions result in the sand being broken into extremely fine dust. This is why air-supplied hoods are required. When a worker inhales crystalline silica dust, extremely fine crystals travel into the airways and eventually deposit on the air sacs of the lungs. The deposit interferes with the transfer of oxygen into the bloodstream and induces scar tissue. Over time, the lung tissue becomes thicker and further inhibits the lung's ability to extract oxygen from the air. The lungs lose the ability to expand and contract. Breathing becomes extremely labored. The damage to the lungs is permanent. Symptoms of silicosis may take years to develop. Initially, workers with silicosis will have no symptoms, but as the disease progresses, a worker may experience shortness of breath after physical exertion, severe cough, chest pains, loss of appetite, and weakness. These symptoms can worsen over time and will lead to death. Besides silicosis, occupational silica exposure has also been linked to lung cancer, pulmonary tuberculosis, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and kidney disease. Using the hierarchy of controls, let's review safe work practices to reduce the risk of exposure to silica dust. The best way to prevent health problems related to silica dust is to avoid silica altogether. Many silica substitutes are available and appropriate for many applications. At the hardware store, take note of silica-free sand for playgrounds or silica-free blasting media. Amorphous, not crystalline silica, is a separate type of silicon dioxide, often used as a substitute. Amorphous silica does not appear to cause serious health effects. The OSHA website provided at the end of this video has listed silica substitutes, along with the recommended applications, advantages and limitations, and price. Dust control is critical to prevent silica dust from getting into the air. Use wet methods that apply water at the impact site where dust is generated. Silica dust can be removed at the point where dust is made using local exhaust ventilation. This can be used in conjunction with wet methods. Full enclosure systems with negative air units ensure air discharge from the ventilation system is not recirculated into the work area. Physical isolation barriers can isolate work processes and control dust. Ensure that all engineering controls are working properly prior to use and replace water and air filters as necessary to control dust. Avoid dry sweeping or using compressed air during regular and thorough housekeeping procedures. If you are required to wear a respirator, it is because safe work practices and dust controls cannot limit silica exposure below occupational exposure limits. NIOSH recommends the use of half face piece particulate respirators with N95 or better filters at a minimum. Match the respirator to the amount of silica you are exposed to and the kind of work you do. Ensure filters are changed regularly. 
A clean shaven policy ensures the respirator seals properly to the face. Abrasive blasting work requires a Type CE abrasive blasting respirator. In addition to respirators, other PPE may be required, such as Tyvek suits, eye and hand protection. Ensure respirators are removed after other PPE to avoid breathing in dusts. Decontamination is important at the end of each shift. Don't bring contaminants and dust home with you. Wear disposable or washable work clothes. Change at work and shower before going home if facilities are available. Leave work clothes in a bag in the trunk of your car or truck. Leave boots, tools, and work clothes out in the garage. Practice good hygiene in the workplace. Do not eat, drink, or smoke in the work area. Wash your hands and face outside the dusty work area before smoking, eating, or drinking. NIOSH recommends that workers visit a doctor for proper examination prior to starting the job with silica hazards and then follow-up exams every three years. This includes work history, a chest x-ray, and a lung function test. Most jurisdictions require this in legislation. Did you know smoking can dramatically increase your risk or add to the severity of health effects of inhaled chemicals, including silica? Stay safe at work so you can stay healthy in your personal life. If you have further questions regarding this topic, please contact your health and safety representative.